morning. I have no coffee yet. I don't think I've had any. I have my coffee cup, and I just realized I haven't drank any of it yet. So I'll be busy drinking coffee. Somebody else will have to ask questions. Welcome to uh, Hopkins County One Million Cups. I'm Carol Jones, um, and it's so great to see you guys. This morning we have with us Tammy Workman and Tabitha Davis from Southern Notions. They are a new shop located in Dawson Springs. So they're going to tell you all about what they do. So welcome, ladies. Hi, my name is Tammy Wartman, and um, let me tell you a little bit. This is Tabitha. Good lady. Uh, I teach school at Dawson Springs. I have one more year until I retire. And I went to an auction and bought two buildings. Don't know why. And. I had always wanted to open a shop, but the timing wasn't really what I wanted, but the building, the perfect location came open, and when I went to the auction, I bought the buildings. Then I went to my husband, I bought two buildings. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's all worked out. There are things that lead you toward a direction, and sometimes you just don't need to gripe when your prayers are answered, even though the timing may not be what you want. So that's what we go with. I teach school during the day. I don't get to the shop until 3.30. When I get there at 3.30, I stay till 8 at night, and Tabitha runs the shop during the day. My background is in crafting. I do the crafting, sewing, basket weaving, all of that kind of stuff. That's my area of expertise. Tabitha's expertise is she's the floral designer and the gift shop. So between the two of us, I can even make a fly arrangement now, and she can cut a yard of fabric. So we've made a lot of progress in those areas. <coughs> Um, I'm, I kind of put the PowerPoint together with things that we've learned and things we still need to learn, things we do right, things that were, have been a flop for us. And we have the philosophy of neither one of us have ever owned a business, we're going to mess it up sometime. We mess it up, we learn from it, we don't do it again, we go on. So that's kind of our premises. Neither one of us have ever owned a business, like I said. I have never even worked in retail. Tabitha has worked in retail, and she tells me all the time to slow down because I look like a spastic case sometimes. And um, we get along very well. We, we were not best friends or anything when we started this. We kind of came together out of necessity. But I have learned one thing. You have to have knowledgeable people around you that you trust completely. And you have to be open to criticism. And if something bothers you, we tell it to each other immediately. We do not let it fester. And it may not be anything significant to the other one, but if the other one's bringing it up and it bothers you, then it's got to be something to the other one. So just adhere to that. So anyway, here's what we're doing. I'm going to kind of talk to you about the auction building the idea. We call it the dream and the nightmare. Because <laughs> it can be a nightmare. Okay. When we bought the building, we bought a building, two buildings, side by side downtown. It's the old Clark and Shears and Clark building. It's a hundred year old building. It, it's, it was very, very important to us to keep the integrity of the building while updating it and making it look inviting and kind of what we envisioned. So this is what we started out with, kind of. That's the first day we went in. This, the side on the left is really the right building. I got them backwards. And this is the Clark Bashirs and Clark side, and this was the old, what, what they called uh, the Ben Franklin side. It used to be a Ben Franklin store. Um, the Clark Bashirs and Clark side used to be a funeral home. When it was open, there was a funeral home upstairs. And in the upstairs of it, and it's kind of spooky, but it's got this huge round window, and the skylight where they used to bring the bodies upstairs, and that's where they had them. And then they've got two big visitation rooms upstairs, and they had the embalming room. Now this is what this building was used for 100 years ago. So there's a lot of history in it. Okay, Captain. And then we went to work. <laughs> so we started stripping floors and tearing out old things and calling people in, getting their opinions, seeing what we were gonna do. But the tile floors had to come up. And when the tile floors came up, we found more problems. This is what it looked like when we had it all stripped down. You can tell there was nothing but pegboard and concrete. We stripped everything else out of it, and that's what we were down to, the bare bones. Okay. 
we fell in love with 100 year old concrete. When I had people come in to give advice on what to do with the floor, they, everybody wanted to jackhammer it up because that's why you do things nowadays, pretty much. You get rid of it and fix it. Tabitha and I didn't want to do that. It's 100 year old concrete. We're going to leave the concrete. So we stained it. Made the prettiest floors you've ever seen. There are cracks and holes everywhere. We love it anyway. <laughs> so next came the walls and the ceiling. The one side, well, both sides have tin roofs in them. That was the ceilings. That was there when it was initially opened. One of them, the ceiling tile had been put in because they had had a ceiling leak years ago, and the, the tin on one side is not very good. The tin on the other side was in fabulous shape. So my husband, who used to be an art teacher, and has that artistic thing, he goes, we've got to paint these copper. And I go, well, we might get to that one day, but not right now. Let's just get open right now. Well, okay, Captain. He was on the strikes. Well, when you're getting free labor, you got to <laughs> meet him somewhere in the middle. He goes, I'm not working unless I can get these ceilings fixed. So he painted the entire ceilings copper. So now we have copper ceilings in the store. And how to pick out the colors, we kind of went with a natural khaki color. This brick wall has been there forever. This is the office that used to be there. We left the office, we left the counters, we left everything we could leave. We just painted big ceilings with the floors out. Okay, Tessa. Okay, here's the, and then whenever we had that done, we're like, okay, now we start with what we're gonna do here. So Tabitha and I both believe in divine American. We are so into that. We also wanted to put money back into local economy, if at all possible. So we had a hierarchy of things. <laughs> buy local if we can. If we can't buy local, we buy area. If we can't buy in the area, we at least buy in the state. If we couldn't do the state, tri-state, can't do tri-state, at least go U USA. About 90% about of our products are made in the United States. Some things I just couldn't get. I, I tried, I just couldn't. And I'm still working on those avenues, but some things I just couldn't. Um, we have, I think we have three wholesalers that we use from Madisonville, two from Princeton, um, one in Dawson Springs, no, two in Dawson Springs, and it, we try very hard. If there, we can get it, and you may pay 50 cents to a dollar more, but that's okay. You're going to buy the United States if at all possible. Okay, Catherine. We opened two stores. We opened Southern Bells on one side, and we opened Southern Notions. Southern Bells is registered as a subsidiary com company to Southern Notions. Southern Notions is the parent company according to the laws and all of that, those things. So Southern Bells, it specializes in fresh flowers, silk flowers, gifts, jewelry, funeral sprays, gifts of sympathy, Candleberry and tuxedos. And I'm going to kind of show you real quick those items. Fresh flowers, Kevin yeah, does a great job with those. Just go kind of quickly, baby. Silk flowers and wreaths, gifts, and we want to have more of the country, primitive, <clears throat> historic kind of feel in our store. So we try to incorporate new things, like you'll see kind of new items incorporated with the old. We kind of incorporate all of the above. Okay, Catherine. Uh, we do, and, okay, hang on a minute. Keep calling it the wrong name. Shot, shotgun jewelry. I keep wanting to say gunshot, but that's not right. <laughs> shotgun jewelry, that seems to be the new trend now. So we're selling quite a bit of that. Uh, funeral sprays is, and I'm, at first this really bothered me, and I'm still not real good at receiving the families and saying the proper thing, so I just sit there and don't say anything, and Tabitha takes care of that. I'm getting better at it. One of the things we specialize in that no one around here does is we monogram all of our ribbon. We have an in-store monogram, so we put burlap ribbon in them, and we monogram whatever people want, and that way it's not the little stickers and stuff on there. It looks really nice. Next up. We have our gifts of sympathy, which any florist is going to have to have. And then we have candleberry, which you can have one distributor of candleberry. And all, like I said, it's all United States, American made. Um, 
we didn't really think about the tuxedos until a couple of months ago when we realized no one in town did them. No one in town did that well. We really didn't want that money to go out of town. So we started doing the tuxedos. I have a place in Texas that we're using. I'm looking to get that closer to home, but I haven't found those outlets yet. Okay, then we have the Southern Notion side on the, in the other building. We kind of had two complete entities here. That one was sewing, basket weaving, DMC floss, crafting, dog collars, standing beds, paint parties, homemade idea, items, and monogrammed items. Okay, and I took this last night. It was a little late. That one's dark, and I'm sorry for that. This is kind of the crafting aisle. We have all the fabric on one side. You can see felt, and we have the hoops and the mats and all of that stuff on the other side. Okay, Tampa. And then we do basket weaving classes. And this was our last basket weaving class, two of the ladies that took the class. We wove for nine hours that day because they wanted to make this big basket. And I go, guys, it's going to take us so long to make that. I said, let's do a smaller one. They go, no, we want this big one. I said, okay. So nine hours we wove that one that day. Okay, Tampa. We do as many homemade items as possible. Um, these are some items we have in our store, and they rotate constantly. We may not have the same things next week. Uh, we have organic lip balm and headache relief. We do the herbs, the essential oils. My niece brought, my niece has made the soaps and the sugar scrubs, and she designed the label. She's 10 years old. So she's designed the label. It was a recipe that uh, my aunt used to use, so she passed it down to my niece. And she's made them. She designed the label. She designed the packaging. And she wrote it up as a school project. So, and then she came in and I told her, I said, now do we need to sign a contract? <laughs> I said, are you going to adhere to your word? And she goes, I can't take me. <laughs> so I didn't make her sign the contract for it. Okay. We, tanning beds. There is not a tanning bed left in Dawson Springs. All of those places have hence left. So, we thought, well, we'll start tanning. So we took a corner and we put three tanning beds in there. And this is kind of what you see in the tanning products. Okay. We have paint parties, which is so much fun. I think they're probably one of the, everybody just laughs, it's so much fun. Um, these are some of our paint parties. That's a mother and daughter. And uh, a cheerleading squad came. And then, of course, for Christmas, we made the door hangers. So that's just some of the items we make. Okay. Customized dog collars. My daughter has two mastiffs. And I don't know if any of you guys know a lot about dogs, but the bigger the dog gets, the uglier the collars get in the store. Okay, I mean, there's just no nice way to say it. The uglier the collars get. So we, a few years ago, my daughter and I, when she started getting the mastiffs, were like, well, these are just not. So we started making our dog collars. Well, then everybody goes, oh, where'd you get that collar? And I was like, well, I made that collar. So then I started making collars for other people. So then I incorporated it into the store and bought an engraving machine where I could start engraving the tags. And last week, we mailed some to South Africa, to France, California, North Carolina, Virginia. I can't remember what I mailed them to last week. Did I get it on that one? Last week? OK. So we're, and that business is starting to pick up. That business is picking up because my daughter belongs to several Mastiff dog breeding organizations. Well, they see it, they tell two friends, they tell two friends. I've got an order to make 76 dog collars by next week <laughs> to send to a breeder in North Carolina. <clears throat> so anyway, and my sewing machine bobbing case broke, so I've got to get that fixed before I can finish that order. These are just a few that we made. We also are doing the monogrammed wood items. I have a company out of Louisiana that I'm using for the triplets. That's what you call the three letters like that. And I was using them for all of my wood items. Since then, I have found a company. It's called Grandma's Creations. I'm write on the name. And there's a lady out of Anton, a lady out of Morton's Gap, and one out of Dawson Springs. And they are all friends, and they have started a company where you can get their wood. They do the letters and the cutouts for the paint party and all that. 
So I've started getting all of those items from them. But they don't do these kind of things, this detail. So when it comes to that, I get these out of Louisiana. <coughs> I really like this company. It is a Christian home for boys. So the boys that are there are in trouble and they have to work. They're teaching them a trade so they can go out and be productive members of society. So we get our items from them. I want that money to go toward them. And then we do monogram items. We have a lady that comes in, her name's Ashley McKnight. She works at South Hopkins Middle. She lives in Dawson. Her <coughs> husband is a police officer in Madisonville. And she does all of our monogramming, does a fabulous job. Uh, people who come in, we usually have less than a week turnover. Uh, we do have some people that need it quicker than that, and we try to accommodate that. Um, DMC Floss, I don't know how many crafting people I have, but there's nowhere in Hopkins County or Caldwell County that you can now purchase DMC Floss. You have to go to Evansville, Paducah, somewhere like that. So I bought all of the DMC Floss. There's 554 colors. We counted them all, didn't we have them when we put them on there? Um, so I started carrying that. And I carry a particular kind of thread, and the reason I carry that one particular kind is because it's 100% cotton, and the Mennonites from Crofton use that type of thread. And they can only use a certain kind due to their religious beliefs, so that's the reason I carry that type of thread. Okay, things we've learned. <laughs> okay, insurance is ever changing and deciding on which riders, and I don't know if you exactly call them riders or whatever, to choose can be overwhelming. I think the insurance has been the hardest part for me in this whole process. And it's a very difficult to get insurance in a historic district. When you have a 100-year-old building, it's a nightmare. I, I had more problems getting the pay with the insurance than getting all the paperwork together to purchase the building, to buy all the merchandise, and do all the other stuff put together. Okay, number three, the next thing we, oh, it's very difficult working another full-time job. I think if I hadn't have been teaching full-time and could have given more time to opening this door, I probably wouldn't have made as many mistakes. But, you know, the mule can only work as hard as the mule can work. Um, it's best to hire a CPA to guide you with your bookkeeping. That way you don't, you make sure you're doing everything correctly by the book, with the books. I don't think I worded that exactly right. Um, we were like two weeks into the process when I went and talked to the CPA and learned I had done everything wrong. So then I had to go back and redo everything. If I went to him to begin with, I wouldn't have had to go back and retrack and redo that. So then we opened up the weekend before Thanksgiving and I wasn't caught up with the paperwork until January at that point because I got behind. Start on top, don't fall down and try to get back up. Uh, we decided what to set don't try that again. When deciding what to set as your startup cost, add another 10% to that cost. We went over my budget big time. Big time. 10% should have added on for incidentals. Individual companies have to pay workers' comp insurance. I didn't know that. I thought the state just provided it, I guess. I don't know like where I thought it came from. Did not realize that. You have more to learn. Yes, I didn't know that. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's best not to rely on one single entity to support your business, diversify. Just because you like something, that doesn't mean it will sell. <laughs> I found some of the most beautiful things in the world didn't sell a single solitary one of them. Know your demographics, your surrounding demographics. When Tabitha and I started this, we were kind of shooting for $30 to $50 type price items. We learned real quick that wasn't going to work. The economy is too bad for that, especially where we're from. We learned that we sell more items in the $20, $25 range. So that's where we try to stock most of our items to fit that demographic need. The next thing I learned, <laughs> she's going to laugh. When we started this, I was like putting $2, $3, you know, Please, don't do the dollar ninety nine. Just put two dollars on it. You can't do that. It, that ninety nine cent trick really does work. It makes a difference. I don't know why, but it makes a difference. Uh, personal and business costs are completely different. Whatever you think it's going to cost you personally, 
or has caused you personally in your lifetime to get the gas turned on, the phone turned on, the electric turned on, all that, that's a completely different ballgame when you do that. It's just a different ballgame. A crowded store draws more customers. We've learned that. About, was it in January that our store collapsed the first time? Okay. We had a <clears throat> catastrophe at the time. One, the ceiling fell in in one of the stores on the Southern Bell side. We lost about $8,000 worth of merchandise. Yeah, and we got a hard hit. But there's a reason for everything, it'll be okay. So when that fell in, we took all the merchandise out of that store and combined them into one store. You know, just kind of. And she had been telling me all along, Tammy, you've got to put stuff in here, and you've got to put stuff in here. And I'm like, nobody wants to trip over all this. I want an aisle I can walk down. Once we were crowded, we started bringing in more people. And people goes, oh, well, I saw you from the road. You had a whole bunch of stuff in here. So they come in. And I'm like, okay, everybody does want the crowdedness. So I was wrong on that. Tabitha was right again. Uh, this was the first month that I have not had to pay a bill out of my pocket. So I guess you would call this the first sustained month that we've had without me having to pay anything. If you open a business, you're gonna to have to realize you're gonna to have to pay out of your pocket that first bit to get your bills paid. It's just part of it. Um, you must keep new inventory flowing in the store in order to continue to draw in customers. Like sometimes when we've only got so much money, you know, we're trying to figure out the best way to use it, like I may want to pay something and get something paid off quicker or whatever, get that done. But you've got to put it in inventory. If you don't put it in new inventory and you don't have those new items coming in, the customers aren't going to come in. You've got to realize that's your number one priority to get the customers in. You've got to have that mindset. Um, Fifteen, get great wholesalers whom you can trust. We had a couple of bad experiences. If you don't trust them and I'm not paying somebody I don't trust. I'll go find another one. I'm, I'm just not giving my money to people like that. I'm not doing it. Okay, the biggest things I've learned above all else is you can't do it alone. You must surround yourself with knowledgeable people who you can trust and support their decisions. Tabitha has been an absolute godsend for the store. Without her, none of this would be possible. We are in this together for the long haul. I can't thank Tabitha enough for everything she has done. She truly has gone above and beyond in order to make our dreams come true. And you need to realize it's our. It's not mine, it's our. You've got to have somebody you can trust completely. I'm so blessed and so grateful to have a wonderful spouse and family. My husband, Kit, and my daughters, Elizabeth and Emily, especially Emily, poor Emily, She's still going at home, the other one's gone, so she doesn't have to do it as much. But Emily goes down to the shop, she paints, she makes wreaths, she does whatever we ask her to do. And she said something the other day, she goes, am I ever gonna get paid anything? I said, I don't know, honey, it's just not looking that way right now. She goes, just something would be nice, and I said, I'll get to you one day. And you need to realize that your dream is not your family's dream. So you need to still realize that they're doing it because they love you, not because they love the dream. Okay, while owning and operating a store like this, this is our dream, there are times that aren't filled with rainbows and butterflies. It's important to keep in mind that you're going to have different ideas and opinions on things. But most important thing to understand is that it's okay to have differences. The best way to approach a matter of differences is to speak openly, truthfully with each other, accept constructive criticism, and sometimes it's just best to walk away. When I am a very hard worker. <coughs> I have a very, I guess my mom and dad instilled that in me from a very young age. I will work like a dog. And Tabitha does. And Tabitha kept telling me, Tammy, you're going to get burned out. you got to stop. you got to walk away. you got to do all this. I go, oh, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. She said, you can't work all day and then come down here. And then I was working Saturday and Sundays, too, trying to get things going. She goes, you can't do it. And last week, I had a meltdown. And I said, I've got to have a couple of days off. I can't do it anymore. Mentally, I just got to walk away. And we kind of have a deal that whoever's there makes a decision, the other one supports it 100%. <clears throat> if you're there and you're making the decision, the other one supports it. You can't be questioning and asking each other for everything. It's not going to work. Things that we've done that's been a big flaw. <laughs> 
Picture frames, no one wants them. <laughs> okay? I put all kind of inventory into picture frames. Don't you think they'd be nice in a gift shop? They don't sell. Okay? So that's been a big flaw. I hired a lady to do alterations because I had three or four people ask me about it and they wanted it. Well, just because three or four people want it doesn't mean it's going to sustain it. So that was a big flaw. Uh, Mennonite business I thought was going to be more than it was. And um, it hasn't been. So that just, I tried. It didn't work. Organic dog treats, flop. Consignments, I had consignments to come in to bring hand, handmade items. I had them from Princeton, Madisonville, Gila, Dalton. I had them from several places. The problem with that is, is like, I was taking 25% of what the, the item was and they were keeping 75% or I would write them a check for 75%. And I wasn't charging a monthly fat, flat fee. But what happens there is, is like the bill would come due for something else and I would pay it not realizing I needed to keep 75% back to pay them. It wasn't my money, it was always, and it, anyway, it threw my paperwork into a turmoil. I wasn't good at that and I think if I had more time I would have been, but I just didn't have that much time and I couldn't distinguish the difference in the beginning. But when the ceiling fell in on one side and we consolidated, I got rid of all the consignments because we just didn't have room. Something had to go, and I wasn't making much money off of them, so as a business decision, that had to go. Things we still need help with, advertising. I am horrible at this. Absolutely horrible. I've put like $1,000 into advertising, and we still have people walk in every day and go, oh, I didn't know y'all were here. Yeah. And we had a big yellow banner. I'm not lying to you. A big elevator, probably half as big as this board, had it hanging outside for over a month and it said tanning beds. We had people come in every day going, I didn't know y'all had tanning beds. <laughs> and Tom was like, do they not see the big elevator outside? <laughs> and I mean, the people that drove by there every day. And we're like, and I told Tom, I said, I don't know what else to do. I, I honestly, I took out a half a page in the newspapers I would put a big banner in the gyms to support the kids' ball team, and it, I don't know. Our biggest thing has been Facebook. I think we've got like 2,000 friends now that follow us on Facebook. Like people come in and they find a store and they like it, and then every time we get new merchandise or sale or something, it goes out to everyone. That seems to be our best way right now. Okay, follow the signs. I truly believe I'm being guided. Sometimes when you think things have just, it's catastrophe level, it's not. There's signs, follow your gut, go with it, it'll be okay. Just realize you're being guided somehow. Okay, is that it? Okay, look how far we've come. <laughs> we aren't finished yet. This is our stores. Um, and the reason I put this is you can tell I've got up here and got these fixed but I haven't got on the other side where the roof is damaged yet, got those fixed yet. And every little thing like that makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And this is the side that collapsed. So we're gonna get it fixed. Um, but we took all of that and put it in here, and this is the Southern Bells and this is the Southern Ocean, so I'm gonna get that sign moved too. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other side. I haven't decided. My husband went up there and looked at it. It's gonna cost us about $20 to fix it. What happened is the water ran up under it, froze, and then when it thawed, it didn't have anywhere to go, so it came in in the roof and came down in the store, all in the flowers and ribbon and all that good stuff. But it's okay, it'll be all right. And I didn't have the right rider for that insurance. That's not my question. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I found that out. But it's okay, it'll be all right. 